Hello class, in this video, we're going to cover 4.1 inductive and deductive reasoning. And this homework assignment in the MyLabs math has um, 15 problems. So number one says, find a counterexample to show that the following statement is false. The statement is, if a number is multiplied by itself, the result is even. And this is not a true statement because for example, my counterexample was that five times five, which are two numbers multiplied by it themselves, and that does not equal an even number because 25 is not an even number, okay? So essentially, if you multiply any two odd numbers together, you will, though anything could have been your um, counterexample. So for instance, three times three, which is nine, seven times seven, which is 49. Any odd number times itself would not result in an even um, answer or product. So moving on to number two, same directions, find a counterexample to show that the following statement is false. So the statement is adding the same number to both the numerator and the denominator, the top and bottom of the fraction, does not change the fraction's value. And here's the counterexample. For instance, if I had the fraction one over two, if I add a number to both the top and the bottom, for instance, let's say I add one to both the top and the bottom, the result I would get in the numerator is two and the result I would get in the denominator is three. However, two thirds is not the same thing as the original one half fraction that I started with before adding the same number to the top and the bottom. Um, and so therefore I have given a counterexample. Now, number three says, identify a pattern in the given list of numbers, then use this pattern to find the next number. So looking at these numbers, um, and I might have to go a little bit further out, or you know what, I think I can just go like this. There we go. It might look a little bit slanted at the very bottom, but. I'll fix it in a second. So the numbers are 71, 62, 53, 44, and 35. And I noticed that between all of the numbers, they had a difference of nine. So 71 take away nine gave me 62. 62 take away nine gave me 53. 53 take away nine gave me 44, so on and so forth. So if I stop at the last number and I continue that pattern, I take away nine, the next value should be 26. Number four has the same directions as number three. So we're gonna identify the pattern and then we're going to use that pattern to get the next number. So here I noticed that each time they were multiplying by five. So in order for me to get the next number, I'm gonna take this response and multiply it by five, which gave me this large value here, 15,625. So now I'm gonna move on to the next page. Excuse me. The next page, uh, a lot of these problems have the same, all of these problems on this page have the same exact directions. Um, all they asked us here to do is recognize a pattern and then use it to find the next value. So here I have one, one fifth, one twenty fifth, one twenty five. I realized on the first one that they took one and they divided it by five. So one divided by five happened to be this fraction um, one fifth. And then one fifth divided by five happened to be one over 25. And then that value divided by five is one over 125. And that value, if I continue the pattern divided by five will give me the next result, which is one over 625, okay? Now here I am going two, four, eight, 14, 22, 32. So what I saw was that from here to here, I didn't see that they were multiplying by anything specific. Um, so here I would have multiplied by two, here I would have multiplied by two, but then from here to here, it's not a multiplication of two again. So that kind of made me exit that strategy that they were multiplying by two each time. So then what I did was I just tried to see what number they were adding because they are getting bigger, so they are adding a value. So I noticed from here to here, they were adding two. From here to here, they had to have added four. From here to here, they had to have added six. From here to here, they had to have added eight. From here to here, they had to have added 10. 
Now, if I keep the pattern, notice that it's just all the even numbers increasingly getting bigger. So two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Well, the next even number would have been 12. And since they're all adding these even numbers, um, I went ahead and added the 12. So the last response plus this 12 is where the 44 came from. Um, so for number seven, I'll let it um, adjust a little bit. Normally if I stick my hand in there, it'll cause it to adjust. There it goes. Well, that didn't, there it goes. So for number seven, it says um, same directions, identify the pattern and then apply that pattern to the next to find the next number. So from here to here, I didn't really know what was going on. I thought maybe they were adding four. Like I really, I don't really see much else happening there other than they just added four. I couldn't figure what's going on here. And it just so happens that this pattern may not have anything to do with anything. This might be necessary to start the pattern. And so there's not really a relationship between what's going on between these two values. And that will become more evident as I keep um, going. So I noticed from here to here, they added four. From here to here, um, it looks like they added five. To then go from here to here, it looks like they added um, four, uh, what is that, nine. Then from here to here, it looks like they added um, 14. And then from here to here, it looks like they added, hmm, what is that? Uh, three, so 23. And then I need to figure out what they're gonna add for the next one, okay? So what I did was, is I realized that they added four first, then they added five. And then over here, they added nine. Well, guess what? Nine is four plus five. So these two previous numbers, if you combine them together, that's what gave us the nine. 14 can be found by taking the pre two previous numbers, five plus nine. 23 can be found by taking the two previous numbers, nine plus 14. So what I did was I added the two previous numbers together, 14 plus 23, which means I just needed to add 37. And 60 plus 37 is where I got the 97 from. So that one was very, very interesting. It was a little weird. Um, and a little difficult trying to recognize that pattern. So for number eight, there are shapes. And so the shapes go as um, square, circle, triangle, square, circle, triangle. So if I keep that pattern going with the shapes, the next one should be a square, right? Um, that one, I mean, they do in elementary. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys are not gonna get stuck on that one. But number seven, number seven is pretty challenging. Okay, number nine is also a tiny bit challenging. Um, I can explain to you what I see, but some people may see things a little bit different. If you notice in the, my math lab, it does say there may be more than one answer because you may be seeing a different pattern that's happening. And that doesn't mean that it's incorrect. As long as the pattern is consistent throughout all of the numbers, then that is a bona fide um, pattern and you can use it to find the last number. It's just, if your pattern is different from my pattern, your number that you come up with might be different from mine, but that doesn't make it less correct. So only time it makes it less correct is if you're not using a bona fide pattern that is obvious that it's that that's what's happening throughout the entire sequence of numbers, okay? Um, so like here it added four, here it added five. I, in, unless this was like four, five, four, five, four, five, I can't establish uh, a pattern with just the four and the five. So here in number nine, again, this is the way I see it. I don't know that everyone's gonna see it the same way, but I noticed that the first box, they all have boxes of nine, okay? And in the multiple choices, they all have boxes of nine with a bunch of Ds in it. So and it makes sense because these are A's, these are B's, these are C's, and then eventually you get to one with all Ds. Now, what I noticed is that it had A and A in the two top left boxes. When you went to the B's, they had those same boxes marked but then two extra connecting boxes, okay? So that's what I saw was that it changed the letters from A to B 
and that they use the same boxes that were there before, but then put on two additional boxes with B, okay? And I recognize that that's exactly what's happening here as well, to go from this entry to this entry, still a box of nine boxes, but I'm gonna replace all of those Bs with the C, the next letter in the alphabet, and then it has two additional boxes marked with Cs. So when I go to do the next one, it would be D, okay, and I tried to explain it here. It would be D, all of these Cs would turn to Ds, and then I would have two more Ds within this thing, okay? Now, where those two Ds go, it, they would all be connected. So it could have been two Ds here, two Ds here, or two Ds over here. But in the options, um, there was one that had the two Ds here on the left, and so that was the option that I chose. But it did have to have all six of these Ds here, just like the previous step, but then an additional two Ds, okay? And so that's what allowed me to select the correct answer. Now, number 10 says, repeat the following procedure for the four given numbers. Multiply the number by six, add four to the product, divide this sum by two, and then subtract two from the quotient. And it gave me this statement that the first number is one. So I started with the number one, and I did the first step, which was multiply by six. The result was six. Then I added four to this product. So when I add four to that product, I get 10. Then divide that sum. So this is the sum. Divide that sum by two. I get the number five. And then subtract uh, two from that quotient. So this is the quotient, the result of the division. And when I subtract two, I ended up with the value three. So the first number I found um, is three. Then it also gave me the statement that the second number is six, okay? So for the second number, I took that six, multiplied it by six, my product was 36, added four, my sum was 40, divided by two, my quotient is 20, and subtracted two, and my final result is 18. It also gave me the statement that the number, that the third number is seven. So I did seven times six, that product is 42, plus four, that sum is 46, divided by two, that quotient was 23, subtract two, and that result is 21. Then it told me that the fourth number was 11. So 11 times six, product is 66, plus four, the sum is 70, divided by two, the quotient is 35, subtract two, and the result is 33. So it says write a conjecture that relates the result of, to, of the process to the original number re, re selected. So basically they want us to take the four numbers that we were starting with and tell them what happened to those numbers to get the results that we got. So when I was doing working on number one, my result was three. When I worked on number six, my result was 18. When I worked on number seven, my result was 21. When I worked on number 11, my result was 33. As you can see, the result is always three times the number that I started with, okay? And it says represent the original number as n. So instead of writing a, you know, the number I started with, I just wrote the letter n. So three times n can actually be written in this expression, three n. And so that's what they're wanting for that problem or for that part is three n. Now for part B, it says represent the original number as n and use deductive reasoning to prove that the conjecture in part A is correct, basically. So what we did was if we multiply the number by six, remember n is the number. So that's the number times six. Then add four to this product. So there I am adding four. Divide that sum by two. So there I've done it. Um, now I've reduced this before I moved on. So I noticed that when you have fractions, you could do each uh, term over the denominator. So I split the fraction into two pieces. And then six divided by two is three. The end still carries along. And four divided by two is two. So I have simplified 
this fraction or this expression into 3n plus 2. The last step says to subtract 2 from that quotient, that result. So I have divided it, and this is my result. Um, when I do that, I get 3n plus 2 minus 2, which essentially cancels the 2s, and you end up with just 3n, which is exactly the conjecture that we came up with in part A. So we have proved that these operations to any kind of number will result in the conjecture that we noticed, the pattern we noticed, which was all the original numbers were getting multiplied by three. Okay, number 11. So number 11 says, use inductive reasoning to predict the next line in the sequence of computations. Then use a calculator or perform the arithmetic by hand to determine whether your conjecture is correct. So here's the pattern of what's going on. They have four plus eight equals this, four plus eight plus 12 equals this, four plus eight plus 12 plus 16 equals 16 times five over two, four plus eight plus 12 plus 20 equals 20 X over si uh, times six over two. And so notice what's happening here is they're adding four to um, on the left-hand side. Well, they're adding a number the way I'm writing this is, is not, the way I wrote this is not correct. I'm realizing that. Um, so basically what they're doing is they're taking, um, I'm gonna try to rewrite this a little bit better. So this is a quick little notation of mine, okay? It's called left-hand side and then right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, what they're doing is they're adding four to the last term and adding that result to the sum. So notice here, if I take eight and I add four to that, that's 12, that's the result. And then what you're doing is you're adding the 12 to this sum. Then if you add four to 12, you get 16 and 16 gets added to the sum. Then if you add four to that, you get 20 and 20 is added to the sum. And actually I messed up here because there should be a 16 in the middle. And there was, I just didn't write it, okay. And so then what we're doing here is if I continue that pattern on the left-hand side, um, you have the four, the eight, the 12, the 16, the 20. If I add four to 20, it's 24. And then I would add that 24 to the whole sum, okay? Now on the right-hand side, um, that's a little bit different. What they're doing is they're taking um, the result from adding four to the last term of the left-hand side and multiplying it by, and here, what would it be? Notice that they're multiplying by three, they're multiplying by four, they're multiplying by five, they're multiplying by six, so in this case, it was seven and then divide by, well, each time they're dividing by two, so we can assume that they're gonna divide by two again. So notice that when I took the last result, I got 24. So I'm going to add 24 on the left-hand side and I'm gonna change this term here or this factor here to 24. Then the six is gonna go up to seven and the denominator has been two all along. Now, when I add all of these digits together, so we have four plus eight plus 12 plus 16 plus 20 plus 24, we do end up with a value of 84. And when you come over here and you do fraction 24 times seven over two, we get the same 84. And so, yes, the conjecture is correct. What I, the pattern that I recognize that was happening is correct because it was allowed, it did allow me to get um, a true statement. Okay, moving on. 
number 12 has the same direction. So here's the problem. We have four equals one times four, four plus 10 equals two times seven, four plus 10 plus 16 equals three times 10, four plus 16 plus what equals what? Okay, so that's the part that I filled in. So this is all that was given. Okay, now I noticed that they added six to four and that would be 10 and that's what they added to the sum. Then 10 plus six is 16 and that term is added to the sum. And then 16 plus six would be 22 and so that is added to the sum, okay? Now for the right-hand side, I noticed that it's one times four, two times seven, three times 10. Well, notice that the left factor is going up. So one, two, three, the next one would be four. Here, four plus three is seven, seven plus three is 10. So 10 plus three is 13. And then it wants me to check to see. So next consecutive number between one, two, and three, the next consecutive number would be four. And if I take the last number on the left side um, in the previous line, so, you know, add three, add three, add three, add three. I don't know what this says. Last number on right and side plus three. That's all that that should say. I don't know what this is. Okay, there we go. So last number on the right-hand side plus three, last number on the right-hand side plus three, last number on the right-hand side plus three. There we go. Um, now, when I do this side in the calculator, let's see, clear. 4 plus 10 plus 16 plus 22, I get 52. Now over here, 4 times 13, I know this because there's 13 cards in a deck of cards and there's four suits, so I know it's 52 cards in a deck. It's the only reason I know how to do that without the calculator. Um, but this conjecture is correct because I did get a true statement down here. So continuing with this same directions, um, Here's what they've given me, okay? So this is all the given information. And then we're going to come up with the next line. So notice that it's seven times nine plus four equals 67. 76 times nine plus three equals 687. 765 times nine plus two equals 6887. 7654 times nine plus one equals 68887. So on the left-hand side, I noticed that the, the number in front, they're all being multiplied by nine. So I immediately knew I was gonna have a times nine, okay? Um, what I didn't know is what number was gonna get multiplied by that nine. So notice it started with seven, then 76, then 765, then 7654. So it made sense to me that the next one would be 76543, okay? The times nine is pretty consistent with is is consistent with all of those uh, lines. Then the number that they're adding seems to be decreasing by one each time. So first they were adding four, then they were adding three, then they were adding two, then they were adding one. So the next would be to add zero. Okay. Now notice here it was sixty-seven. Then now there's an eight in between the sixty-seven. Now there's two eights between the six and seven. Now there's three eights between the six and seven. So it followed logically to me that there would now be four eights between the six and the seven, okay? And so what I've done here is I've done to verify is seven, six, five, four, three times nine plus zero. And it turned out to be this six, um, eight, 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 seven, okay? And then on the other side, it was six, eight, 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 seven. So it does verify that the conjecture is true. Last two problems in this particular section. So here it says, study the pattern in these examples. So you have A to the fifth power, hash 
or it's not, it, I don't know what people call that. They call it hashtag nowadays. It used to be called the pound symbol, um, a number symbol. I did whatever names. I don't know what the official name is it, of it is. But anyway, it's A to the fifth power with this symbol and then A squared. It could have been a triangle, a circle, a square, a smiley face for any, it doesn't matter what that operation is that's happening in the middle. That's why you're using a symbol instead, okay? So notice that here it says the A and five is two, okay? So A5 with this symbol, A2 somehow equals A to the 12th power. A3, this symbol, A6, somehow equals A to the 20th. A6, this symbol, A to the 7th, is somehow making this A to the 44th. So the idea is, is to figure out what pattern is happening, okay? And I figured out the pattern by looking at these because I knew that if I added these together, I would get seven. If I added these together, I would get nine. If I added these together, I would get 13. And these didn't seem to have a consistent relationship with 10, 9, and 13. So the next thing I did was multiply them. So 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 6 is 18. 6 times 7 is 42. And I recognize that each one of these numbers is two more than that product. So I wrote my little notes over here that Five times two plus an additional two will give me that 12. Three times six plus an additional two will give me that 20. And then six times seven plus two will give me that additional, will give me that 44. And so these are the choices that, that were there. And out of all of those, the ones that describes the relationship is whatever number is here and whatever number is there, I'm going to multiply those two numbers together and then I'm going to add two. And so it was that bottom, for me, it was at the bottom. The problem's randomized, so yours might be in the middle somewhere. But what they're doing to this exponent is what's important, okay? Now, last problem in this section. So it says, identify the reasoning process, induction or, or deduction. Explain your answer. The data in the graph are from a random sample of 1,200 full-time four-year undergraduate college students on 100 campuses. The bar chart shows the percentage of students identifying the greatest problem on campus. We can conclude that there is a high probability that approximately 30% of all full-time four-year college students believe that lack of financial aid is the greatest problem on campus. It says, this is an example of inductive reasoning because a general conclusion is reached based on a specific example, okay? So they notice that um, it says approximately 30% of all full-time, um, approximately 30% of all full-time. So when you're talking about 30% of all full-time, that's, that's generalizing something. It's making a general conclusion. Um, they believe that the lack of financial aid is the greatest problem on campus. And if you look here, with specific data, you have the fact that um, this is telling you that same thing, okay? So this one is the highest, and it happens to be 30%. 30%. And so that is a specific measurement, a specific example that's allowing you to generalize, okay? Because we don't know about all full-time four-year college students. We've only surveyed 1,200 of them, but they're making a very general statement about every full-time four-year college student. And so that's why it's a... Um, induction, because induction is when you have a general conclusion based on specific measurements or specific examples. Now, just in case you get a problem that was deductive, pay attention to what they're saying, but a deductive reasoning is when a specific conclusion is reached from general facts. So that would be like if they told me something about all um, of the people that have a lack of financial aid or all the people that voted for drug use or all the people that voted for driving um, drunk. If I had all of those specific 
um, bits of information, full bits of information, then that would allow me to draw conclusions, general conclusions, okay? So um, that is the end of this section, and we will, this is only the first section of the second unit, so I will keep going with my videos, and um, I will see you in the next one.